Oh, oh, here we go. Look at all the... I love the way all the dwarves change. That's so incredible. It's brilliant. Yeah, so they're all stone now. Hi, guys, and welcome to another video. Um, check out the dwarves. Yeah, like I said, they, they all completely changed to stone. The, the quest guys don't, which is a little bit weird, I guess. Um, but yeah, uh, all the dwarves are now stone. So yeah, welcome to another video. We're really, really coming up into the last stretch of, uh, of Eye of the North now. Just two missions to go. Two of the last missions in the entire game, might I add. We, we, we're so close to having finished everything. It's, oh, I, I just can't believe we're so close through to, to the end now. But here we go. So here's all the dwarves. They're all now turned to stone. That's what happened at the end of the last video. All of the dwarves have been changed forever they'll never be able to sort of reproduce anymore but apparently now that now that they are stone they've sort of been imbued with the power of the great dwarf and they have what they need to fight the great destroyer okay and we, we've recruited all the the asura we've got a load of the even vanguard with us a load of the norn everybody's here we're all ready to take on um the great destroyer and get to the central transfer chamber in fact if we press l we'll see our actual objective right now which is the eye of the north has revealed the source of the destroyers we must journey deep within the shiver peak mountain and eliminate the evil at its core. The power of the Great Dwarf and your many allies await your command to begin the final assault. So here we go, right, this is the, the final assault, well, kind of the, the second to last final assault. Let's do it. So let's speak to Jarlis. What news of the war? He says, it's good to see you. Our plans against the destroyers proceed apace. I'm ready to seek the source of the destroyers and take them out. Our forces stand at the ready. We either return victorious or in pieces. Are you sure you're ready to go? I feel so weird like speaking without an accent and then as soon as like they come up to words like ye and you're and I it just sounds so disjointed. But anyway, yes, there's no turning back now. I just <laughs> I just remembered I um I think I left the kettle on. No. Let's do it. No backing out now. Destruction's depths. So this is a pretty awesome mission actually, uh, and it's in my opinion one of the harder actual missions you have to do in the game, one of the hardest ones. In fact, I can't remember, there was a specific Nightfall mission that I was doing, I can't remember which one it is anymore. Uh, but I said, hey, this is a really hard mission, it's maybe only outclassed by a few other missions. And I mentioned Destruction's Depth, and people were like, oh, no way, Destruction's Depth's like way harder, or, or something like that, I can't remember. But this is quite a hard mission, so uh, we need to take command of the golems and find the missing Asturian Patrol. I love it, because... I have the North, I mean, we've done so many episodes, but I have the North not really that long, so you get to this point and it really is like the culmination of everything we've been doing, which is awesome, and it feels really cool to sort of have all the forces come together here, but I, I don't know, it always feels a little bit hollow to me, like we didn't really have enough exposition on the races to feel super awesome here. Anyway, here's Ula, and she says, he says, uh, the Asura gate leading to the central transfer chamber is far beneath us, and overrun, and overrun by destroyers, but I'm not worried, in fact, I'm so confident that I'm going to send you ahead. Oh, okay, thanks for the vote of confidence. Have any of the Asuran patrols in the area come back from those caverns? Not yet. Take some of my golems along as well. I refit them to allow you to switch their modes while allowing me to communicate with you. I wouldn't do that for just any human. So like, we kind of get like, Ula will be speaking to us essentially like over an intercom from here on, which is pretty cool. And here you get the, the three golems. Now these guys will follow you the whole way through the mission. They're a cool little dynamic to, uh, to, to the gameplay. They don't change things up that much. There are a few strategies you can do at the harder areas. I just whistled while I said SH. I really don't like the way I just did that. But yeah, there are a few strategies that you can do with these guys in some of the harder bits, which I will mention when we get there. Uh, I tend to find them a little bit fiddly, but it's cool anyway. Okay, so we got uh, they're all Golem 2.0s, as you can see. They were Golem 1.0s during the Golem mission, which is quite cool. You have to wonder, like, in Guild Wars 2, what sort of version number the Golems would eventually have gotten to. It'd probably be quite high. But you can see that one's a melee guy, one's a defense guy, and one's a ranged guy, and we can activate them. At the cost of energy, which is also a really weird mechanic that you never see anywhere else in the game. But I think it's kind of cool, in, in, in a way. It, it, it kind of fucks over, like, warriors and paragons who only get two bips of energy regeneration, making it a bit annoying for characters like that. But I guess, you know, Eye of the North, they weren't scared to develop um, sort of missions that were based around the idea that they would be more fun if you played with lots of other people. Um, so, like, if we had more than one player here at the moment, you know, you could have the caster using it and have your frontline people not do it, but... In any case, we'll speak to the Golem 2.0, and uh, it says, Systems on standby, Crystal Core requires additional power, so we can recharge it with 15 energy, which now is already recharging. And you can see this guy here, he says, power levels restored, and he will be following us around. So, in the Golem mission, you can only have two Golems with you, now you can actually have three, which is pretty awesome. Um, he's running off to fight already, is he? No? No, he's going to be there. Uh, he's ranged, and you can actually repurpose these guys to whatever you want. This guy's a defense one. He's like your typical Holy Trinity, I guess, um, so... Systems on standby, let's recharge him. And lastly, let's recharge the melee one. Now, even if you set these guys to defense, they do damage to 
protect your team, so like they, they absorb life force out of enemies. So I tend to just always have them on defense. I don't know whether that's actually the best way to do it. I mean, generally just have fun with it, but see, you know, we've got two defensive ones and one ranged one. Ranged ones, I actually think, do end up, wind up doing a lot more damage than the melee ones. Like the melee ones are more defensive, if anything, really, because, well, not more defensive than the defensive ones because they don't heal, but when it's melee and range, I actually tend to find that they're, they're more durable while the ranged ones are sort of just do more damage. It, it's, the, it's the same kind of thing as, um, you know, like Necromancer summons with the Bone Fiends, how they actually do more damage than anything else, despite the fact that they're arranged uh, but yeah okay so we're, we've got these guys here sorry I just rambled for ages and didn't really play the game I didn't mean to frustrate anyone there uh, and we're gonna head on through so we've got lots of just regular wildlife here no destroyers so far so so far so good oh yeah so uh, where are we at the moment you might be wondering well this is we're literally under the battle depths this is like essentially I suppose you can't walk to this area like we didn't go through in a surrogate or anywhere but I, I presume that after we spoke to Jarlis he took us to this place it's kind of annoying that Jarlis doesn't come with you in this mission as well that would have been so cool if Jarlis was with you I mean we just saw the transformation of the dwarves right and they're so significant and cool but like You'll see as we go through, it's not like you get to fight alongside a whole army of stone dwarves, which is a shame. I could have imagined, you know, having a group of golems is cool enough, but like a group of dwarves running around with us as well would be pretty sweet. I'm not saying this and Jarlis is with us, am I? No, he's, he's definitely not. So anyway, we'll kill these guys as well. Um... But yeah, so I guess we're just sort of in the, the battle depth somewhere. We're, we're not that far away. But on that topic, actually, I did say last episode I was going to show you, and then I forgot when we were seeing that thing with Tom. Um, a lot of you guys loved his armor, by the way, and I agree with you. I think it this armor, actually, I, I've, I've rolled an assassin, one of my mains, if you can call it. That was an assassin. It was like my second ever character. Um, and that assassin, I got all kinds of armor for, but Assyrian armor was one of the ones that I never actually got. So I'm quite happy that I can dedicate this in my Hall of Monuments now. Um, you know, we went all the way through Nightfall getting loads of armor and, like, most of it had already gone before at some point but so this is actually quite beneficial to me okay so it's not that way we're going to be coming this way yeah no stop getting distracted if we're going to come over here look this is where the heart of the shiver peaks is right out in the middle of nowhere brilliant isn't it so this is actually i was a bit wrong actually rin's about here so it's actually um more west it wasn't really south of rin at all but it's pretty cool i love the way they put the just put that random thing out there in the middle of nowhere they do it again later as well it just shows like how they weren't scared with Eye of the North to sort of integrate all the areas all around the Tyrian continent. I mean, if you think about it, if they never added the Tarnished Coast sort of section to Eye of the North, then it really all would have taken taken sort of place in its own little world space, and really it would never have had to have shared a map with the original Prophecies map at all. Um, but they didn't do that, they they mixed it about, which is really cool. It's not the same as what I always wanted it to be. Like, from the, from the time they've, the very first expansion, they're standalone games, but like, when I was first playing this game, I I didn't 100% understand that the, the, the idea of n never really having expansions for Guild Wars, but rather just standalone games. Um, and that's not to say that because they're standalone they couldn't have done this, but what I always wanted to see was the maps being shared. So when we're in factions, when we're in Cantha, we can see where Tyria is. Now today I actually think it's kind of cool because it adds a bit of mystery and no one's 100% sure how far away specifically Cantha is. And that's quite cool, leaving that mystery there. I do think sort of leaving a bit of mystery in a, in a game world goes a long way but still i think it's it's such a shame that there, were, there was never a situation where like nightfall came out and you could specifically see everything all on the same map i mean nightfall was quite cool and i've ranted about it so much but it was cool the way that they let you walk from one explorer area and one continent to the other but there just was never enough like it would have been cool if there were more actual portals instead of sort of a weird like bypass through a quest sort of system that you had to do with nightfall any case, I hope Guild Wars 2 does that. They have said that they're not doing stand... Like one of the main reasons they st started working on Guild Wars 2 is because the standalone system they were using wasn't working. It was in in bringing in so much bloat and new players. It was such a... Like, even with Nightfall, you can see, as soon as they added heroes and stuff, just the skill cap, just... Oh, it was, I can only imagine how annoying the learning curve would have been for Nightfall. When people always say, like, on the forums, they're like, oh, Guild Wars 2 looks cool, I'm going to play Guild Wars 1, what, sh what should I do? Um, what should I play first? And I always see people saying, oh, play Nightfall first, play Nightfall. Now, I agree, Nightfall's a cool game, it was the latest one that they did, the latest full game that they did, and it had a lot of good stuff going for it. Like I said, it's actually my favourite. But... That's one hell of a learning curve, and I don't think that new players should really be sort of subject to that, and I think it's a shame when people suggest it. I still think uh, Prophecies is better because the pacing just lets you get used to everything. Maybe Prophecies and then Nightfall. I don't, honestly, I'd skip 
factions. I, 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 I'm not. I'm not too. I'm not factions' greatest fan. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm ranting. I didn't listen to Rank at all. So Rank says, "Hey, I recognise these golems. Ula sent you, didn't she? Help us hold off these destroyers. Aha! We've got them on the run. Three cheers for Ula and her magnificent golems. All oh, right, and the humans too. Hurrah!" Sweet, so at least they're remembering us. I feel a bit weird reading it out after you guys have clearly already read it ages ago. Seems a little bit redundant, but whatever. Okay, we're going to continue on. So yeah, this mission is like, um, I think this door should open, or the destroyers will bash it open as soon as we get close. Incoming message from Mula. A group of Eben Vanguard are missing in the caverns. Determine their locations. Seek the gate to the central transfer chamber and don't break my golems. Message ends. A Vanguard unit is missing? I bet they're down here too. Now that these destroyer pests are out of the way, open the gate for us. We'll head farther in and see if we can find them. Maybe I should have done this floor with Peter because this has got the uh, Eben Vanguard there. So Sokka says, you want to keep going? After that fight, you're a brave human. Don't let me stand in your way. Ah, see, we're even getting compliments from the Asura suite. So, <laughs> the even fact, I wonder what sort of cir circumstances happened here. Did they sort of stagger the approach? Like, when did the dwarves go in? Like, we saw at the end of the last episode, everyone was kind of there together. But we didn't all go and sort of assault the central cha transfer chamber together. We kind of all sort of, s sort of um, staggered our way in here and slowly moved in. And everyone got split up and moved apart, as you're going to see. Because the whole way through this mission, essentially what's going to be happening is we'll be meeting pockets of people who tried the assault. And, like, help defending them and stuff. And the even Vanguard themselves, actually, um, it's a bit of a shame, really. Here's some of them here, actually. Chance Redding, Jen Valenfield, and Captain Langmar. There you are. There's a new breach in the caverns that's infested with destroyers. We've held them back, but we're running out of soldiers. Are you ready for some action? I'd love to see Langmar here. It's pretty cool. She never really had enough of a role in, in her Eye of the North, particularly after, sort of, War in Kryter and, and her story there. Anyway, I'm pretty sure these golems can hold them off while... While we do some serious damage to those destroyers, let's go. Oh, we actually, do, so do we leave the golems here? No, I don't think we do. They do come with us, don't they? In any case, we're going to keep going. Yeah, so basically what happens here is um, you meet these little pockets of resistance. And sadly, the even Vanguard, uh, which really arguably are the force that most people came with us. Like, the Asura helped, no doubt, definitely, but they're mostly good through the use of their golems. I really don't want to go over there. I always over aggro at this point, so watch out for this, guys, if you're if you're playing along with me. Uh, Captain Langmar says, these destroyers are nothing to fear. Push them back. Show them the might of the even Vanguard. For Ascalon. Yeah, wait a minute. I think some even Vanguard over there just got taken out. Yeah, so so basically, well, the Norn, there were barely any. That was a massive plot point that there were barely any. The Asura are a big help, but obviously it was mostly through the golems. But And, and the even Vanguard were a help because there was supposed to be like a lot of them. We actually got a whole force. But what happens in the mission is they just get wiped out, really. They're just in the background. It's a bit of a shame, really, because you never really see much of the even Vanguard at all. You just kind of meet, obviously, Langmar and so on here. But after that, that's it. That's, it's like you don't. They're, they're just you just see them getting wiped out and it's very difficult to save them you can save them indeed i think there's a video on youtube of someone saving their life which is pretty impressive if you ask me i'm very very cool but they don't actually help you if you save them they're just here to die like that's the whole point of the even vanguard being here which is a shame but there you go this chamber's always sort of been very... Yeah, see, so look over here. You've got lots of even Vanguard. You can run over and try to... Save. They're actually quite weird. Wiki says that if you do save them, um, you can, like, attack them, and they act like, you know, like charmable animals. They, like, attack like those. So if you damage them, they'll they'll hurt you, or they'll just sometimes become hostile. But look at all this damage here. Yeah, you've got these big boss destroyers as well. You want to watch out for those. Obviously, the most dangerous destroyers are around here in, in this mission. I mean, it really does ramp up here. But all this stuff I'm fighting here, you don't actually have to fight over. If I'm correctly, you could just ignore them. Or no, maybe you have to go up there. No, you don't. You can take an early left. Here, look, I'll show you. You don't have to fight these things. Oh, shit, everybody's dying. Tom, why you suck so bad? Why does your team... Yeah, you can go up there without having to fight these things at all. Oh, you can use res shrines, by the way. Um, but yeah, with, with the destroyers to help you out now... Um, I think we've got... Basically, they, they actually have a very cool mechanic here. You can see we've got rank 1, but we don't have the skill for it. Remember how every single one of these titles has got a, a passive ability tied to it? So, like, in the Asuran Homelands, you can get more energy. In the Norn, you can, in the Norn Homelands, you can get more health. In the, in the Char Homelands, you can get... Um, 
um, increased armor against the char and more damage sorry more adrenaline um, basically there's obviously there's one for the dwarves as well and this lets you steal uh, health from destroyers whenever you use skills on them so basically you just do more damage and you're more defensive against destroyers uh, but the way to do that the, 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 the best way to get your dwarven rank up to increase that ability is to complete a lot of the dungeons that's mostly where you get the delver title up which is really cool is everybody alive can I get moving no shit I think we're actually Wait, where is everyone? Did I flag them away? Are we just out? I think we're just out of... No, Menlo's here. Here we go, he's risen, people. Yeah, so um, the, the, the primary way to get that up, so basically the way to make yourself super strong against the destroyers and help you during this fourth arc of the story is to actually do lots of side dungeons, essentially. So take your time, complete loads of dungeons before finishing the, the, the whole of Eye of the North. And I think that's a really cool concept, actually, that you can have an easier time at the end of the game. I mean, they never made it that hard, so there was very little incentive for players to do it. But it's cool that a system like that really is in place, that they're basically saying do lots of the side quests help people out in the dungeons is everyone up no where, where's sin shit they're all the way over here oh tom your teams are so bad why don't i get this account actual skills but yeah it's, it's a cool system so basically though because i've left the dungeons till the end of the let's play coming up very soon actually very soon i, I reckon we've got like maximum maximum five videos left of i of the north and then we'll be moving on to the dungeons, which is pretty cool, and you guys get to play with me. But because I've left it till then, we kind of don't get to take advantage of that. Oh, I know what the problem is, and you guys have been screaming at your uh, monitors because of it. Uh, around here, you get an effect called frozen soil. I'm a complete moron. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, you get frozen soil. Um, the icy stalactites use it. Uh, it seems to have gone down at the moment, or we're out of range, which is cool. There we go. Awesome. Whew. Oh man, how much time did I waste there just standing around not even noticing that? Whoops, okay, so yeah, we're going to move on. Right, yeah, these guys here, they lay down spirits of frozen soil, you see these here? Uh, and these stop you rezzing. Ah, I'm an idiot. Okay, so yeah, that chamber's really weird. Like, it's a huge chamber, but you don't really have to do very much in there. You can just take a nice early left and that's about it. This next chamber we're coming into here as well. Loads of even vanguard up here as well that are just destined to die. It's a shame, really. It makes the humans look very weak. Maybe it's foreshadowing about how the human might is broken over the next 250 years and they're a dying race. And they are a dying race. Some people like try and argue and they say, oh, no, no, the humans are fine. They'll all be brilliant. No, no, they're a dying race and they're meant to be. And it's cool that they're meant to be. Don't try and go against it. So few games actually do that. It's brilliant. We're, like the humans are the elves, essentially. In most fantasy worlds, the elves are, you know, that dying sort of ancient race that's now sort of on the decline and all these other new races. Usually humans are on the up and up, but yeah, in Guild Wars 2, they changed it up and I love it. So there you go, lots of Vanguard warriors dead there. They did their part though. This is this, this floor, there's three floors to this mission. It's not a dungeon. It's another one of those missions that acts just like a dungeon. Basically, the way you can tell whether it's a dungeon or not is essentially, is there an end boss and do you get a reward chest? And if you don't get a reward chest, it's probably just a mission. Uh, it's, it's just, an, I, I feel like ArenaNet was rushed. I, the thing is, like when they were making Guild Wars 2 and they were doing all the initial things, in fact, if you've got Eye of the North, I feel like I, I have already mentioned this. If you've got Eye of the North, you bought a box copy. Look in your manual or look on the back of the manual, I think it is. It says Guild Wars was 2 beta 2008 like arena net didn't know it would take them they didn't realize how ambitious they'd end up getting and how long they'd want to spend making guild wars 2 so i feel like that they, they like rushed with eye of the north and like put it out in six months because they wanted to get on with the sequel but i think if if they were to go back now and see what they were eventually going to do they probably would have spent a good year developing eye of the north just so that it had enough systems in place and content to keep i mean they as i've mentioned before they did put a lot of systems in place to keep people playing for a long time like you know like, like some of the stuff we'll see at the end the destroyer weapons and the titles you know which is generally they've always been anti-grind but they knew that they needed to keep people playing um until guild wars 2 was out and they tried but if they knew how long they were really going to go i think they would have spent a lot more time developing eye of the north and we would have seen a lot less missions like this which are basically dungeons and we would have seen more missions be sort of in actual unique areas and dungeons all with their own unique assets and stuff I could almost guarantee it because there's, there's no way they knew there's no way they knew like you can just tell anyway we come into this big chamber here this is actually going to be the last chamber 
Huh, my plan actually. But no, you will have noticed, and you've probably sussed it out, right? I'm playing as Tom right now. This uh, this mission, Destruction Sets, as I said, it's got three floors. Each floor is going to be completed by a different character. So right now we're on Tom, you see, and, and next floor we're going to be on uh, on Matt, and then the floor after that we're going to be on Peter. Um, and my original plan was to maybe like do a video per floor if if it ended up that long. The floor two and three won't be like that though. But this one, Jesus, this is almost 20 minutes long. I mean, damn. So, yeah, th th that kind of works out, I guess. So, next video, I mean, we're not at the end, so I might as well not do the outro just yet. But next video will be on uh, the next two floors, and then we'll be, like, like the last outpost. I tell you, I I'm, so, I'm so annoyed that in, like, pre-searing Ascalon, right at the start of this Let's Play, like, oh, man, when I started this Let's Play, I, I had no idea what it was going to, like turn into I really didn't I remember because when I was in pre-searing like you watch that I don't go into that much depth about stuff I really don't but it's like when I got out into Ascalon on that original sort of as I was starting off in prophecies I got out into Ascalon I was like man there's just there's so much amazing stuff in this game that people can miss I just want to show them it all and even in Ascalon I never did every quest like we all know that I never did every quest but by the time I got to the northern shiver peaks that was basically it it just like became like a hundred percent there were a couple of things that I didn't do elsewhere like in Crichton and there were a few places in uh, obviously um, factions and I and um, nightfall but man like so in anyway I, 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 I talk about this because in pre searing there's a huge thing that I missed which is a whole outpost a whole explorable area and it like it annoys me that I didn't do that now because I'm like sitting here thinking oh man I've been everywhere we're gonna see the last outpost but not really because I've not shown you guys that one in pre searing it will always it will be the one outpost that this channel never shows you but there you go. Okay, so Ula says, incoming message from Ula. Oh, wait, who says incoming message from Ula? Is that me who's saying that? Huh. Anyway, or is that like a, a narrator that this game's never had, but now suddenly it does? Anyway, have you solved my problem yet? What's taking you so long? Hope you're well, my golems. Had better be in one piece. Message ends. Are they still in one piece? Yeah, they're still going up. Pretty cool. Yeah, I love the defensive golems. They're, they're so cool. They're, what I was talking about, like, with tactics with them, they, they don't really apply on this floor. The next floor is the really hard floor. The next floor is in hard mode. In my opinion, it really is, of all the main, like, missions in the game, one of the hardest moments of all of them in all, in all the game. It's, it's just... You wouldn't believe it. It is really hard. Anyway, here's Langmar. She says, Those Asura are always fussing at someone here. This passage should take you down towards the main Asuran gate. Thanks for your help. Good luck. Yeah, hold on. We've not finished them all off yet. Jesus. Oh, I haven't summoned the Massar. I feel like I should. Yeah, you may have noticed, actually, my party. Um, it's all the henchmen. Basically, I want to showcase all the things. So we've got all the henchmen here. Um, next video, when we're Matt, hopefully we'll see, like, one selection of the heroes we got from um, Eye of the North. And then when we're playing as Peter, we'll get the selection of the other ones. I mean, that's pre that sounds pretty cool to me. So we'll see everyone. It'll be like everyone really is coming down or something. See, I think of these things. I mean, we're coming up the near the end. I've got to try and do it all justice. But here we go. Come on, die. Destroy everything you. Sweet. Okay, right, so um, this is where this video is going to end. We're going down here, one more floor down, and then we'll get to the gate, which will take us to the final floor. God knows where that is. To the central transfer chamber itself. We'll be meeting the dwarves, we'll be meeting the Norn, we'll be meeting all those other people. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you tomorrow. Take care, everybody. See you later.